In this video, we're going to have a deep dive into the Lumos pen. Now, this is a refillable fine liner by Tom Studio. And to go with it, uh, Tom, the Tom Studio has produced this, the number 60 ink from their ink range, which has a really key benefit over the previous inks that they've produced. So stay tuned if you want to find out how to use the Lumos pen. Is it worth it? What kind of things can we do with it? And why would you get the new ink? A little disclaimer, of course, for this video. Uh, Tom Studio have given me the ink and the pen for free. I actually got the pen many months ago and my initial feedback was, I can't use it for my style with soluble ink. And then very recently they brought out some permanent ink, which is what we're trying out today. Um, they haven't asked me to do a review They've given me the pen and the ink, no strings attached. So this review is no strings attached, but always be wary of a YouTuber with a uh, with a free toy to talk about. So do make up your own mind and do your own research about this pen rather than taking everything I say at 100% face value. So the first thing we're gonna do is have a closer look at the Lumos pen. Um, the Lumos pen is, as I said, a refillable fine liner, which is a really exciting thing. The Lumos comes in a couple of different formats. Here I've got a dual tip version. So if I unscrew the back of the pen, we actually have two different nibs. The whole thing is made of metal and it has a rather nice weight to it. But the, the key bit, really, the bit which makes it really exciting for me is that surely this is more environmentally friendly. The problem with fine liners isn't that they're not great to use, they're not lovely to sort of create our art with. The problem is you have to throw them away. So here we go, we have a lovely range of now refillable fine liners with lots and lots of different tips that we can use. So we can have one pen that gets lots of amazing reviews and we can do lots and lots of different things with it. So let's have a look at what's inside the box when you get your Lumos pen. Obviously we've already seen the pen but you have this little array of nibs. You can see it's just got a few out here. They've got this kind of wick end which is made of plastic and um, they've got a, a sort of middle bit which is well we'll see what it's for later and then they've got the tip which again feels actually surprisingly plasticky and it feels a bit like the kind of the nibs that you might draw on a uh, iPad with. The the range of sizes is huge from 0.1 to 1 millimeter and includes even things like chisel nibs and brush nibs so you can have a refillable brush pen. But the question we all want to know the answer to is of course how does it work? So is it easy to refill for example or is it a giant faff? It's actually remarkably easy. So um, when we sort of undo the pen when we've got the nib. You can see this little brass um, holder in if you like. Just unscrew that and then you've got the inner workings of the pen and that's all there is to it in terms of dismantling the larger parts of the pen. Then what's part, what's here is um, got this sort of cotton uh, fillable ink reservoir and then we've got just two other bits apart from the nib. We've got the brass sort of holder. I'm not sure what to call these things, but a little brass bit which basically holds the nib in. And we've got the nib holder, which is this little black thing here. Um, so all in all, it took me, what, 20 seconds, 30 seconds to undo. And then we can pop another nib in and pop this brass bit over the top. And we've got the sort of nib holder. <laughs> Maybe that's the best term for it. We've got the nib holder now in place. And then we just slot this little ink reservoir. This ink reservoir, I mentioned it's made of cotton. It's basically uh, cotton wrapped in some kind of plastic, I think. Um, and it just absorbs the ink. We'll see exactly how that works. But you can see with a few shakes, it actually took quite a few shakes, some editing in there. But with a few shakes, we can actually get this nib working really quickly. So the, the ink just flows from that cotton into the nib of the pen. I mentioned at the beginning there's a problem, and here you can see the problem. It's not actually a problem, this is soluble ink. It's a problem for me because I like using permanent ink because I'm a line and wash sketcher. But there is good news. So the good news is what I alluded to at the beginning, 
we have our number 60 ink. So our number 60 ink, what makes it special? It's a pigment ink, so it's permanent. It is a bit like my other favourite ink, Sketch Ink, that's a pigment ink, and uh, Carbon Black Ink by Platinum. So first, if we're going to load up our little reservoir of cotton, we want to show that this pen is indeed refillable. Not just fillable, but refillable. So in there I have Soluble Ink by Tom Studio, but I need to get my permanent ink in. And this is a test of the ink and the pen. And you can see, if we dip it in some water, we very easily get lots of ink out. Um, obviously, you can see by the amount of ink that we're going to need a lot more water. So actually what I found most effective was putting this under a tap and letting the tap almost push through the reservoir and then tipping it around a couple of times. But look, it took me about five minutes and that is pretty clean. That is a basically white cotton uh, reservoir now. It's not filled with ink at all. Uh, I also took a bit of time to dry it out um, and now I just dip it in. And if we hold it there, you'll find it's very, very absorbent. So mostly filled with ink already. Um, I took a bit of time here to turn it around both ways. So you're filling it up from both ends. I also squeezed it out a few times. I'm aware that if I've got a lot of water left in there, even though I've taken time to dry it, if there's water left in there, the ink's going to appear to be a bit gray or a bit diluted. Um, so I wanted to make sure that wasn't a problem. And indeed, that will become really important for a lot of this video because there were some issues I found in using the Lumos with this ink. Um, we got over them in the end, and so you need to watch the whole video to find out how we got over them. But there were some issues. And so being clear to make sure that the ink is not diluted is going to be really important to make sure you don't have issues in using your pen when you refill it. And all I do, as before, we pop the contraption back together, pop the nib in, the nib holder, pop the brass, whatever we're calling it, back on top. And you're there, you're ready to sketch. So changing inks probably took me in total 20 to 30 minutes, um, excluding a bit of drying time as well. And you can see it instantly starts working. So we instantly have these nice crisp lines on our page. There was no editing involved there. It literally did just start working that quickly. And um, the new nib just immediately was soaking up the ink and putting it on the page. Turning it around, we can use the old ink as well. And then I can really quickly do a first test of waterproofness. And we can see the old ink, the soluble ink is indeed soluble. And this is pretty permanent and pretty quickly as well. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to um, to bleed a little bit, at least a little bit, because that was very little drying time at all. Now we should talk about here the nib that I've got in there. The nib I've got in there at the moment is a 0.2 millimeter nib, so a very fine nib. And um, there are all sorts. So here's a brush nib, um, and you can see it act like a brush pen. It's it's a little bit actually like the Tombow Fuday pens that I often use in her acts. It's not as um, really loose and floppy like a true brush. It's more of a, a sort of gentle felt tip or something like that. Um, but it does work. I, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of depth to these other shaped nibs because I don't often use them. So I'm not the man to test them. Instead, we're going to focus on its fine line of properties, but we will be using that brush nib quite a bit later. The other tests that I think are really important to do are to really look at how it writes and look at the quality of the ink, how black it is, and really simple things like that. So first, we've got our Tom Studio Lumos. This is, as I said, the 0.2 millimeter nib, and it's the number 60 ink, the permanent pigment ink that we've been playing with so far in this video. And you can see it writes very easily. Um, it produces a clear line, good ink flow. Turning it over, this is the brush pen, just to sort of test it out, try it out. Uh, and you can see again, it writes very easily. There's a little bit of variety. Well, actually quite a lot of variety. I wasn't sure when I recorded this what the ink was, but it's actually called deep black ink. That's the ink that the Lumos comes with, a little taster, if you like, of deep black ink by Tom's studio as well. 
And all in all, they feel quite good. We're going to talk about the feel of them a lot more later in the hands-on testing, the sort of the real life testing, if you like. Um, but they feel all right. Let's start with that, at least so you know if you only get this one, that they, they feel all right. Got a fine liner here. This is a unipin. This is a 0.3 millimeter fine liner. Interesting to start noticing that this fine liner is a little blacker. Um, it is definitely a bit bolder as well, isn't it? It's supposed to be 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters, it's supposed to be a bit bolder, um, but it's definitely darker. It's got more contrast. This is my favorite fountain pen, Platinum 3776, with an ultra extra fine nib, which is supposed to be about a 0.2 millimeter nib. Um, and this is why I'm testing these three, because they're all very similar. Um, and again, we can see actually, perhaps this is even blacker. So this is using carbon black ink by uh, Platinum, which is my most used ink, my current uh, or long-standing favorite ink. And it's also a permanent ink. So actually, I was a little uh, confused as to why this Tom Studio ink was so grey. It's not supposed to be grey, and I thought I'd done a pretty good job of preventing it from being diluted. So I have some dip pens just to try out the inks. So again, carbon black ink, uh, the same as in the fountain pen. Really quite, quite black. Definitely a nice black line. Just exactly what I'm expecting. Moving on to the Tom Studio number 60 ink. Well, actually using the, using this, it's quite black again, isn't it? So we've got a quite comparable sort of tone of ink in the bottle. Why is it not coming through the pen? And this could be lots of different reasons. At number one, it could be because I didn't manage to dilute it properly. Um, so I think the first thing to do is just test, is that the reason? Is that why the ink appears so gray coming out of the Lumos? And how are we gonna test that? We're going to dismantle the pen again. So to see if the ink in the Lumos is gray and watered down, I don't think it is, but just to check, I'm gonna take the pen out, gonna draw with the back of the nib, and I'm gonna draw with the sort of cotton reservoir itself. And this will show us a rough estimate of if I've diluted the ink down or not. And I think what we'll find is actually it's pretty black. So it's definitely black. You know, there's not much dilution going on there at all. So it's something else. I don't think this is um, me failing in some way to get the right concentration of ink in the reservoir. I even redid the, the dipping. And we can see maybe after dipping it a bit more, this is a little bit darker. This is the same 0.2 millimeter nib, maybe a little bit darker, um, but not as black as the fountain pen, for example. But there is a solution. I discovered there is a solution. Again, we're gonna work out how we got that solution, how we got really lovely black lines by doing a bit more hands-on real life testing. And through that testing, we'll come up with our solution. So. I really just wanted to let you know that this pen is fantastic. We can get to a really deep, dark line. The next thing before we do that, that I wanted to test was the drying time of the sort of ink itself, the number 60 ink. So what I always like to do here is test the pen immediately after a minute, after five minutes. For me, if an ink hasn't dried by five minutes, I'm not gonna use it. It just wouldn't suit my sort of mental processes, if you like. I want to sketch quickly. If I have to wait 10 minutes before I can go from ink to watercolors, it's not gonna suit me. So this is how I always test my inks whenever I use them. And you'll see that in the other ink testing videos that I've got on my channel. You can see the Unipin is predictably quite good after naught minutes, but there is some lifting. It does come up a little bit. Um, that's fine, that's what we expect. The carbon black ink, I know if I draw when it's wet, if I add on some watercolor or water, it will lift quite a lot after zero minutes. Um, we saw earlier that the Tom Studio number 60 ink was pretty good after a, an amount of time I wasn't sure about. Um, I didn't know exactly, was it um, a minute or two minutes or 20 seconds? Um, but here you can actually see it performs pretty well. It performs, we, we do our little line, and then we add some water and there's really not a huge amount of movement. Um, probably 
a similar amount to the Unipin. And I wasn't expecting this either. There is something to think about here though. And I do keep saying this because this is important. I am using a 0.2 millimeter uh, nib here on the fine liner, and that will not be laying as much ink down as a fountain pen. Even a narrow fountain pen will not lay as much ink down. So that might be one of the key reasons why it's drying so quickly. Here, you can see after a minute, they're all perfect. I didn't wait for five minutes because I was like, well, what's the point? If they're all perfect at one minute, they're all going to be perfect at five minutes. So, you know, Tom Studio ink size, nib size, you know, notwithstanding, has the ability to dry really quickly. So it is an ink which I can certainly get on board with. If only <laughs> we can make it sort of a little bit more punchy, a little bit more dark. And so let's start doing some real life hands-on testing, something where we can actually put it through its paces as if we were using it in real life. So I started off with just a really quick sketch. I am still using the same 0.2 millimeter nib. And you might ask, why am I doing all the testing with this little nib? Well, number one, because that's the size I use most. I use 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. And so I want to test how that feels compared to what I know. Number two, it's a nice size for getting little details in. Um, and number three, one of the little weaknesses of this pen is although it's got interchangeable nibs, did you see how dirty my hands were changing them? It's not an easy stress-free process to do out in the wild. So realistically, you're gonna to have to have two nibs, you've got two ends, um, and stick with one of them. Now, my, my first impressions here, drawing with it, is it feels all right. And I mentioned I'd, the feel would come in. It, what it feels like is actually drawing a little bit like on an iPad. The, the nib is hard wearing. That's the impression I got. It's made of plastic, it's quite hard. Um, and so it sort of smoothly glides over the surface. It doesn't provide a huge amount of feedback. So this is watercolour paper with a light texture and a fine liner would scratch on the surface. I would feel it, as do the fountain pens. This one less so. It feels a bit like, as I say, drawing on a tablet screen, which is really smooth. And I do, for, for me, find that a little bit of a weakness. It's, it's not as nice in the hand to use. It's a lot nicer in terms of how it feels, metal construction, the weight. It's very lovely, but just in terms of how it glides. Also, what we have is a pretty interesting scene, but there just feels like there's something missing to me. It just lacks something. And I wanted to do a little bit more testing to work that one out, to work out what it is that's lacking and can I get on top of that? So. Let's get a sketchbook out and start doing a little bit more. The thing I felt was lacking is that, that punch. And this is kind of confirming to me that the ink coming out is a little gray, a little lacking contrast, a little lacking punch. And for me, I need my lines in my style. I need my lines to immediately add something. They're quick. They take five to 10 minutes. And if they're not immediately adding punch, then the rest of my art's not going to hold up. Um, you might find other people who like building up their art really slowly, adding lots of hatching and textures and uh, building up contrast really slowly. You can actually prefer a pen which isn't as bold and dark immediately. So I sort of thought in this little sketch, I'd try a bit of that. Um, I still haven't the patience to do an awful lot of, of that style. It just isn't what I'm comfortable doing, but, or I say comfortable, it's probably just not what I enjoy doing. But I thought, let's do a lot of hatching. Let's do a lot of hatching, let's do a lot of textures and see if that really changes how I feel. Um, maybe that's the problem, I'm using the pen wrong. And it is really important to recognize when you get a new bit of equipment, a new toy, something new to play with, we do need to work out how to play with it. It's not just gonna magically be perfect for us. And you can see here that building up the tone, if I go over lines lots of times, we are getting a darker line, as we'd expect to. And that starts to suggest that the issue with the ink, you know, we've already tested it, we've already seen it is black if we use a dip pen. Um, so the issue with the ink is probably how much ink is getting laid down by the pen. So the ink's not the problem, maybe the pen is, maybe 
the way I'm using, or the way I've set up the pen is a problem. I'm having to work really hard here though to get a bold line, pushing quite hard. One thing I'll say is the nib is holding up really well. Um, the hatching is very easy to control because it's so fine. Very, very easy to control and get this really fine granular level of detail and to avoid just overwhelming the seam. But I am having to work really hard <laughs> to get these bold lines. Now, I think um, this is a, a strength. Often we're looking for something which can produce a really fine line and a lot of control. And we end up buying really fine fine liners um, or really fine fountain pens like I've got, and they're still not quite fine enough. This is not going to be a problem with Tom's studio pen. Um, but, you know, is it able to produce a really immediate, dark, bold line? So that's that's the bit I want to know. Can it work for me? Not, is it good? It's definitely a good pen for some people. Is it going to work for me? I also wanted to just take a little opportunity to explore some of this brush pen. <laughs> I do love using brush pens in my art anyway sometimes. I have a lot of Faber-Castell pit pens. I've got a review video coming out about those as well and my experiences using them and experimenting with them. Um, and I wondered if that was the answer, changing the nib to something fundamentally different. Again, I'm finding this. It's got the soluble ink in, but the soluble ink is deep black, is really black, and it's coming out rather grey. We can layer it up, but it really is definitely coming out rather grey. And this ink has not been diluted um, because I've never cleaned that reservoir out. I've only ever used that reservoir for the deep black ink. Um, so this ink is still coming out grey. What I thought, one more experiment, is what about if we use just a bigger fine liner? If we reset our expectations of what a fine liner diameter should be. So I got the 0.5 millimeter fine liner out, which would normally be one of the boldest sizes I would use. And I'd only use it at the end of a sketch, the end of a sketch where I want to basically uh, make it a little bit more illustrative, a little bit flatter, really make some lines almost too bold in places. But with this thicker fine liner, look what happens. We have now got that really bold, immediate black line. So even just in this really simple little sketch of people, we can see that this is more like my normal style. This is much more pleasing to draw with. It's still quite smooth. It's still not quite got the feedback that I would personally like. But if I picked up a Unipin 0.5 millimeter, I would find it too bold. It wouldn't sort of suit me. I'd need to go down to a 0.2 or 0.3. Same with pretty much any fine liner. Maybe a bit bigger, like a 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and a Winsor Newton, but broadly speaking, something really fine. Here, I think what I'm just having to do is reset my understanding because it's a different piece of equipment. So this is a really important sort of uh, learning point or reminder for me and perhaps learning point or reminder for you as well. When we get something if it's not immediately working for us, we need to stop assuming things about that piece of equipment, be it a brush, be it new ink, um, be it new colours. You know, these things are uh, often needing their own way of being handled or their own way of working. We can't immediately um, assume that the way that we work and our understanding will sort of uh, seamlessly fit on top of a new piece of equipment. And here is a great example. I wouldn't have dreamed of putting the 0.5 millimetre in. In fact, I didn't put the 0.5 millimetre in for ages. I was sort of getting ready to leave this video as a fairly lukewarm to uh, neutral <laughs> kind of review of this otherwise really nice pen. Just saying like, clearly, I was thinking clearly there is something about how it takes the ink from that reservoir and puts it in the nib, which just doesn't work. But that's not true, it seems. It just seems that their sort of calibration of the sizes of the nib is very different. And unlike with a Unipin or something like that, where you have a very thin line, you still have it nice and black. In the Tom Studio, what I experience is that the thin lines are rather grey, probably because they're not laying down very much ink. 
Um, what are the thicker line, the 0.5 here? Really nice, really bold, really easy, good variation, easy to control the hatching, very sort of simple to sketch with, which is exactly what I want. Um, one thing that I can't explain is why the brush pen is so sort of grey. Um, again, that might be down to how the reservoir works and the amount of ink that it's drawing up. It might be that I haven't fully soaked that recently enough and got enough ink in there. I can't explain it. I actually don't mind that because for me, I like using grey brush pens to add tone. I don't like using really black brush pens with my ink art because what I want to be able to do is do a simple line drawing like this, add a bit of hatching and then use a lovely bit of tone on top just to provide a really quick cheat towards a little bit more shape, a little bit more 3D-ness. Now with all of that waffle done about fixing our problem, let's just put this 05 millimeter on the page as a comparison and look. 0.5 millimeter is black. It is definitely black. If anything, it's probably even blacker than the carbon blacking. And again, that's probably because of it's a little bit bolder than the fountain pen. With that, I mentioned I like using the brush pen to add a little bit of tone. So as a little last hurrah, let's see how the brush pen does. And um, with some water, I'm doing a little bit of sort of uh, wet on wet ink um, and also without water and we can see that we can produce now a nice soft shadow that's the wet on wet processes and it it kind of turns a quick doodle a really simple sketch into something which is akin to real art you know it, it takes it from something really simple in your sketchbook to something a little bit more magical just that little bit of emphasis of light and shadow um, we can see again the same ideas using it wet on dry. You don't need to wet the page. It's just nice to know that you can, that you can create a range of effects. Again, if you enjoy using brush pens and you want to see lots of different ways you can use them, I'd really encourage you to keep your eye out for my Faber-Castell video, because in that we're going to look at layering, wet on wet, smudging, uh, mixing, and loads of different ways, and also ways to use some mixed media approaches for our brush pens. And you could just as well apply those processes to using this Tom's Studio brush pen. Of course, a video wouldn't be complete uh, without doing a fun, quick bit of line and wash. And this is just to show that, you know what, this pen will work for the kind of line and wash style that I love doing most. Um, here I'm using the 0.5 millimeter again, and I'm just going to do this same house a couple of different ways. Firstly, being a little bit more specific with my lines and a little bit more specific with my details. Keeping it really simple. This is a sort of two thirds postcard size sketch, really small. Um, but I just wanted to show how well it stands up to watercolors. And you can see as I splash on fairly thick watercolors, fairly vigorously, it does absolutely fine. And Again, like although I've been saying that the feel isn't perfect on the page, something which that would normally impact a lot would be continuous line drawing, where you need a lot of feedback. And actually doing this simple scene as a continuous line drawing, you can see, well, if you like my style, then hopefully you'll like this. If you don't like my style or continuous line drawing, then you won't like this, because it's pretty consistent with the experience of continuous line drawing. So although there's not a huge amount of feedback, that's my only real downside to this pen. So I guess I would say it's a good purchase. What you're getting is something you can refill with a number of different inks, including permanent inks. Instead of having to buy lots and lots of different fine liners, you are getting to use lots of different nibs as well. Experiment with different sizes. Again, all in one pen without having to discover that, like I've discovered here, the point two is too small, without having to waste lots of plastic by doing that. You also have something really beautiful and really lovely to hold in your hand. The downsides, as I mentioned, not quite got that tactile feedback that I most enjoy, um, but I imagine that's something you could get used to. Um, 
the other sort of downside is that although it's sort of got all these nibs, realistically, if you're drawing, you're going to have two nibs in the pen and you're not going to change nibs. You're not going to be changing nibs except, you know, in between sketching sessions. So if you really wanted a huge range of nibs, so some people will draw using eight or nine different thicknesses of nib in their art, you're going to need five pens. Um, and that's a lot of money. Uh, so it's not perfect, but it is very good. It's definitely the best refillable fine liner option that I've seen. And it is very true to the fine liner experience. I hope that's uh, sort of helped you understand a bit more about how to use this pen, the pros, the cons, at least from my perspective. Um, and with that, happy sketching. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.